Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central and welcome to Hitscan. In this video, we're going to go over the Q&A answers we had with the devs as part of the new Act Play test. We know about the new map, the new Zed skins, all that jazz, but the devs give us a bit more information on balance of the game, why they haven't nerfed Jet recently, and also a bit more information about some of the changes that could be coming to Icebox in the near future. Before we get started though, a word from our sponsors and also a word from Ryan in the past. Hello, yes, I'm actually in the wonderful city of Berlin. I've been in Germany for three weeks now doing a Valorant Champions Tour playoffs from EMEA, being in an actual studio on a physical desk. It's been great, but it's been even better to get a bit more hands-on with the Alienware M15R5 laptop, which is also sponsoring this video. Because of the timing, I've had to do all of the new act content, the new map, the new skins, the new battle pass, all from this hotel room off of this laptop. It has an AMD Ryzen 5000 CPU, which means that this laptop renders videos faster and performs better making videos than my home setup does. That's how powerful it is. Of course, a lot of you guys are going to be interested in the gaming side. And with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series graphics card, I've of course been playing Varen. I've been playing Counter-Strike. I've even been playing Sea of Thieves on mythical graphics quality. And that's not all. It has a QHD 240Hz display, meaning that it looks even better when you're looking at it with your own eyes. It's 15 inches big. It's not hard to lug around at all. I've been walking into the studio every day, 15 minute walk with this in my rucksack. Not a problem whatsoever considering the performance it has. If you want to get more information, check the top comment, check the description. And again, thanks for sponsoring the video for Alienware. It's been super great to work off of this thing and to play games whilst I've been away. Now let's get back to the news. These questions were answered by Max Grossman, who is Arcane, the co-lead designer, Sal Volcano, who is also the co-lead designer and works a lot on the maps, and Joe Lansford, who is a level designer. And speaking of level, the first question has to do with the new map, which of course has its own gimmick of the attackers being able to get in behind the defenders and pinch them from the north and south sides at the same time. This question I think came in from Bala saying, why does every map have a gimmick? What is the incentive of that? And I don't know who answered what in these questions. I don't recognize the voices that well, but the devs say we tried to make every map have a hook. What is the reason for this map existing? What is the thing that defines this map beyond it being a free lane map with two sites? What else makes this thing special? So every map we tried to answer those questions and have something to plug into. And with this one, it was obviously the eight shape and the attackers pinching in from both sides. The zip lines are all there to lend itself to that core idea. I know this next paragraph was answered by Volcano and he says a reason we have something like the hook is to expand the sandbox in the types of strategies and play styles that are available. The way agents interact with a map, we want to create diversity there. It just creates more design space and teaches us more about what works and what doesn't work in the game so we can create new and exciting ideas that are fresh for players. You can, by the way, use the timestamp to skip to certain questions. This was asked by Mitchman, who massive shout out recorded this for me as I wasn't able to be at the Q&A. And he asked, moving forward, can we expect that the boundary will be pushed further and further for the maps? And the devs say, we hope to keep exploring different design spaces. I won't spoil anything about our future maps and plans, but we are not done exploring everything. That said, however, we also don't want to throw a bunch of wild maps together forever. We know that there are people that want more ascents with more basic layouts. So we will also be making maps like that in the future. We want to deliver on the whole spectrum so all different players can find a map and style that they love. The next question has to do with map pools. Now that we've got seven maps in the game, a big question both from the eSports side, but also competitive, is will we have a map pool? And this is something that was asked, what are your thoughts about having a map pool now that we have seven maps? And Volcano says that map pools are something that we are currently in the process of discussing. It seems like we're leaning towards having one, but in terms of how many maps are in it and all that, we are trying to figure that out. The reason why I wanted to ask this now is because he asked everybody in the call what they thought, and I wanted to extend that question to you guys in the comments. How many maps should be in a map pool? How often should it change up? Should it be every act we get five different maps or seven different maps every episode. What would you like to see when it comes to a normal ranked competitive uh, map pool? At this point, people like Lothar and Mitchman came in to give their perspective, but Arcane did sort of interject with something important saying that we're not going to get something like we used to have in Counter-Strike where you can just pick to play one map like Mirage or Office and one trick that map all the way to Global Elite. 
Arcane says if you're on a leaderboard, so you're Immortal Radiant Plus, and you're able to say that you are that certain rank, it is very much required that you are playing all the same maps as somebody else. I think that the knowledge and skill across a whole map pool is a fundamental skill within Valorant that we don't want you to work around by only playing maps you're comfortable with, which I completely agree with. I think it's completely understandable if you're a ranked player to go into a game and expect you to be insane at Fracture, especially now that we're getting above seven maps. It's going to be very difficult for most players to know all of the lineups. It was never expected in a game like Counter-Strike. It shouldn't be expected to play in this one either. Being able to maybe like ban out and pick maps, much like the new Counter-Strike system, would be interesting. But it ends up in a situation where people are just not going to play Icebox or Breeze anymore, to be fair. But maybe that's something that Valorant could do in the future. Certainly now that Counter-Strike's doing a very similar thing. But the competitive scene, it was asked, what about that? Can we expect more variety from eSports when it comes to a map pool? What's going to happen now? And Volcano again says, this is one we're discussing. Nothing solid to share yet. This next question has to do about maps in the future. Uh, the devs have said previously in Q&As that 7 was the number that they were aiming for when it comes to maps in the game. I wouldn't say they've been rushing them out, but we've been getting maps at a faster cadence than was initially promised. So this question came in saying, now that we're at 7 maps, Will we be getting more maps at the speed that we're getting them now? Will we just stop getting maps in the future? What's the plan here? Volcano says that's all stuff we're trying to figure out internally. Whether we alter the map release cadence, whether the pool is seven maps or whatever, we're still trying to figure all of that out. Do bear in mind that they probably wanted seven maps before, certainly way before Champions, just to make sure that going into this final major event, the first world's event of its kind in Valorant, that there are seven maps that teams can pick from, allowing for a proper esports map pool. Uh, what's typical in Counter-Strike, for those that don't know, is teams would, Team A would ban a map, Team B would ban a map, Team A would pick a map, Team B would pick their map, and then there's three maps left, Team A would ban, Team B would ban, and then whatever's left would be the third map. It's a really nice setup that's been used for eons in Counter-Strike. Now that we have seven maps, we're going to be seeing this in Last Chance Qualifiers and Champions. Seeing as we're on the topic of maps, the question was asked last time, are there going to be any map changes to the maps that we currently have? And Volcano said that we're looking at Icebox, but nothing more to share at this time. Whilst they didn't give a date, the devs give a bit more information on what they're looking to change on Icebox. We have a few things that we are looking into right now. No update on when that would come out, but it's something that we're exploring internally. We're considering a few things about Icebox. Are there any areas that we can reduce some of the angle complexity and the amount of areas that you are exposed to at any given time? This would include vertical space, you know, the A site where there's all of this high ground that you can play from, would be part of it, but it also could be outside of verticality. We're also looking into ways to either make the current plant on the B site a little bit safer or to have different types of plants be viable on that B site. We're also looking into mid, but it's a pretty complicated space, so don't expect there'll be any changes there anytime soon. Again, there's no ETA on this, but it is really interested to hear what they're looking at and what they're hoping to fix. The first point about verticality is probably the most common or obvious complaint about the map. There's so many angles to check. If you're attacking on the A site, there's over a dozen places that an enemy defender could be stood in order to take you out. So it's looking that the devs want to take that and take some of the verticality out. But also they are looking towards the B site and having different plants be viable. Basically, if you are not running a Sage at a higher tier level, it's very difficult to plant on that B site. You need that wall to try and protect you. So it is nice that the devs are aware of that and looking to change it. Because I think my biggest problem with Icebox is the executes are all the same, the defaults are all the same, the agent compositions are all the same. It's not a map where you can be creative because the way that it's designed demands you to do things in a certain way. But it's really boring and unfun to watch and to cast and to analyze. That side of it, Icebox sucks at a map, but it is nice that they are aware of the areas that I think most people would agree that they need to tackle, that it's something to look at. The mid part of it's interesting, but I like how mid is. I'm curious to know what they would change there. Now that we've gone over some moderately good news, I got some bad news to share. First of all, for all of you demo system viewers that really want to see it in the game, we're not expecting it anytime soon. The devs say it's something that we are interested in, we're investigating, but we don't have any timelines on that, so no promises. I think that's not a 2021 thing, to say the very least. I'd probably say it's not a 2022 thing. It could be a year's time if I'm to guess, but 
That's all it would be guessing. Deathmatch changes is another thing that people are asking for and the devs say that we're looking at it. We don't have anything planned again, but it's certainly something that we want to make sure that we're supporting post launch. It did break up into a discussion of um, the problem of deathmatch being that some people want to use it to warm up, much like you would in Counter-Strike, versus people playing to win the game and to be sweaty and try hard, which isn't very good to warm up against. And again, the devs say that this is the big issue that we want to find a way to solve. We don't have a clear solution anytime soon to solve that yet, but this is the fundamental issue that we totally agree with and want to go away to improve. So there's no ETA or no changes coming anytime soon, but the devs are alive with the community on this one that deathmatch needs to change either as a different queue for uh, ffa like warm-up where there's no timer there's no scoreboard much like you'd get in counter-strike that is the hope i would say in other regards to stuff like the clash system there's been no updates there's been no update on the euro rework as well which is unfortunate and as an interesting tidbit geographically fracture is set in america and you could actually go and check the coordinates on the site to see exactly where in america it would be based I couldn't check it because at this point the playtest is down so you guys will have to do it for me and let me know what you find now the big question is around balance changes it was a pretty lackluster patch i'd say with just small changes to killjoy and raise uh, alongside the new act of course and the devs say that broadly speaking we're trying to keep a lot of the balance pretty stable right now especially with masters berlin approaching it is a bit weird because obviously Masters Berlin, because it's, you know, tomorrow at this point, it won't be played as the same patch that goes out yesterday. So I think they really should have put some bigger balance changes in there. But it sounds likely that we might start to see them after Masters Berlin. At least that's what the Hopian part of me is saying. He also mentioned we don't really want to shake up the meta right before all of these teams battle it out. But again, they wouldn't. <laughs> so it's a bit of a confusing one. This came in from Black, who we've been on the channel with before when it comes to skins. I think it was the Glitch Pop set that we were in a video with him. And he asked, are you not nerfed yet because you think she's not OP or because you don't know how to nerf her? I mean, the devs laughed. It's a brutal question, uh, but their answer is pretty interesting. They say, I think the big thing right now is we're just trying to not make a lot of major balance changes in general, regardless of what agents we could or should be changing. I think we're trying to keep it pretty stable for the time being, letting things settle. We have a lot of new maps and a new map this time. We've made a lot of big changes not that long ago with the start of episode three. So there's definitely some stuff that we're just tracking. We are definitely looking at Jet, but we're not ready to talk about anything just yet. It's a bit of a disappointing answer. I do think that we're going to be seeing Jet changes still soon regardless. However, I thought it was interesting considering they didn't want to change the balance around the game around Berlin. It seems to be a lot deeper than that. They don't want to change the game balance at this point at all uh, because obviously they had that big balance update in episode 3 where every agent was changed. KO came in. And right now, they just want to keep an eye on stuff and let things settle, as they put it. I would be... I, I've been okay with the fact that we haven't got many balance changes recently. But I think the balance patch after this, so that would be on the 21st to 22nd of September, after Masters Berlin, if we don't have some meaningful changes to Jet, uh, to Sky, I think, as well, um, looking at agents like Astra, Viper, potentially, I'm not too sure, Sova as well, not to nerf them or buff them in any particular way, but to see if there's any balance changes to really push or pull the dial in a certain direction, I would be really disappointed. I think now is a great time to put those balance changes out. There's a long period for players to get used to the new map, get used to new balance changes. I think delaying it anymore could be a bit of a problem. But an interesting question that followed is how about the operator, the balance on that? The devs again say, I feel right now the operator has more or less been playing pretty well as a primary angle holding tool. I know that we've heard some bits of the past about potentially trying to find ways that other agents can be more effective outside of Jet with the operator. That's something we're thinking about right now. But overall, I think compared to previous iterations of the op in the past, I think this is the most healthy version I think we've had so far. And I would be inclined to agree personally. I'm not much of an upper myself, but I think the gun's in a really good spot right now. It is just that synergy and relationship with Jet that is the problem. But I think that's more of a problem with the agent as opposed to the gun. And finally, just an interesting question. For those that don't know on Fracture, because there's four different quadrants you can attack from, there's four different orbs that 
players can, of course, like a sky, for example, goes to each of the quadrants to hungry hippos all of the orbs up, and then she's more than halfway to having her ultimate. This was brought up as a concern to the devs, and this is what they said. We did test to see how viable it would be to go orb farming and try to take all four orbs in a single round. It felt pretty reasonable. It might have a soft impact on the strategy and how teams prioritize the orbs on the map, but I don't think it's going to be a major difference to some of the other maps in the game that just have two orbs. Since the map has a front back type of thing where attackers can come from both sides on four different quadrants, it felt kind of natural for each of the major regions to have its own orb. Before we had, for example, two orbs instead of four, and it was tough to know or understand why one of the quadrants would have an orb and not the other. Also, collecting all four orbs for one player in one round takes quite a long time. And from playing it, I can definitely understand that. I think you're kind of throwing if you're trying to farm up all of the orbs in a given round, because it means that you're not really participating in the fights, I don't think. But that's it for this time. This is all of the big questions that the devs answered in regards to balance. A lot of wait and see, and we're not ready to talk about this just yet, but some interesting stuff in regards to Jet, the balance of the game and where the devs sit with it, and also changes to Icebox and the map pool in the future. Could be some interesting features coming in then. But thanks for watching. Thanks again to Alienware for sponsoring this video and absolutely saving my butt in Berlin. Being able to make all of the content from that laptop was amazing. Like, it was really nice to work off a powerful laptop like that whilst I'm away. But thanks again to them. And thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.